Hey everybody, it's Aaron from Warmoth, and today I'm going to talk about input jacks, or to be more precise, output jacks. Um, but I usually just call them side jacks or top jacks, so as not to offend anybody from either team. Um, and it's one of those things that at first you think it's kind of, there's not enough there to talk about, but I was thinking about it yesterday and there is actually a lot to unpack. So um, let me get started by talking about them in general and then I'll be specific about the Warmoth options. So to make sure we know what we're talking about, any jack on the side is a side jack. And this is a Strat style top mount jack. And I personally am not a huge fan of these, though I know they've been around a long time and are pretty much a classic, but I'll tell you what I really hate. And it's when people try to get all fancy with them, like on this ESP guitar that I have. And you can see that they've tried to very cleverly use a Strat style top jack along the edge here. And they've carved out this weird cavity here and it's just awful. I hate it when people try to get overly clever with Strat style top mount jacks. I also hate plastic jack plates like you find on Les Pauls. I have a couple and in every single one there's at least one, usually more, corners that have cracked. So plastic, boo. As far as I'm concerned there's only one proper type of jack plate and that is a metal jack plate. Now Warmoth sells two kinds. We sell the square jack plate and then we also sell a football shaped jack plate which is another misnomer if you're not from America because most of the world thinks of a football as being round so it should be more appropriately named an American football jack plate but basically it's kind of an oval it comes to two points. So why would you want to use one over the other? Well it usually depends on the radius or the thickness of the body. In most cases I opt for a square jack plate um, but if you have a very thin body or a very large radius on the edge, you may run into trouble trying to use a square jack plate. And so a football jack plate only has two screws right in the middle. Now I don't have one at home that I can show you. If you want to see what they look like, um, go on the warmest site and there's pictures. But hopefully you kind of have an idea of why you would want to use one over the other. Now when you're locating the jack plate to uh, mark where you want to drill your pilot holes. There's a little trick that I've learned and I learned it the hard way. I always do it with the actual jack installed in the plate and a cable plugged in. Always. The reason why is because this this prong here as you as you I don't know if I can do this so you can see it. As you insert your cable it hits that prong there and it pushes that prong outward a little bit until it engages and then the prong snaps back in. And I have positioned that too close to the inside of the route so that when you try and push the cable in, there's nowhere, uh, there's not enough room for that to expand and let the cable in. And so you get your jack plate on, everything's wired up and you go to plug in for the first time and you can't insert the cable because there's no room for that to expand. So I always position it with the actual jack installed and a cable plugged in so that I don't run into that problem. There's, there's nothing worse than like getting your entire guitar built, go to plug it in for the first time and yeah, bonk. You're not going anywhere until you take it apart and redrill holes and all that kind of nonsense. Now another thing that I will talk about as far as um, those pilot holes, a lot of people ask why we don't drill all the pilot holes for for jack plates and for tuners for that matter. And the reason we don't is because um, there's so many different kinds of hardware out there. And um, you know, like if you're gonna install a metal jack plate, a half a millimeter makes a big difference. You know, if, if it's a half a millimeter off, then, then you have a problem. It doesn't fit right. Now it's easy enough for Warmoth to measure and drill for the hardware that we sell. Um, but you know you may have a jack plate that essentially looks exactly like this but the tolerances and the specs are just a little different and um you know if if we were to drill every hole then it kind of puts the onus on us to make sure it's going to work perfectly and we can't control you know some other brand of jack plate that somebody might have we can't control the tolerances even for the hardware that we sell the tolerances can be off you really have to use the exact jack plate 
or the exact tuners that you're going to install to make sure you get those pilot holes in the right places. And besides tolerances, there's also the question of hardware manufacturers changing their specs. And when they do that, it's not like they, they send a notice to Warmoth so that we can change everything. They just change their specs and then we find out about it when our customers complain. And an example of that is uh, about a year ago, Shaler changed the, the collars on their tuners. And um, it used to be that the collars only went part way down and so our route had this little lip on it. And you know, without telling Warmoth, they changed it so that the collar went all the way through so that if you had that little lip, it wouldn't fit anymore. And the only way we found out about it was when our customers found out about it. And you can imagine how that went. So, you know, the, the tolerances and the changing specs um, from hardware manufacturers, we can't, we can't monitor all that all the time. There is so much out there. And so that's why we don't drill pilot holes for tuners and for, you know, uh, input or output jacks or for uh, pickup rings because you really just need to use the exact one that you're going to use to make sure you get those in the right place. Anyway, moving on. So talking about the side jack hole itself, Warmoth offers three sizes, half inch, three quarter, and seven eighths inch. And the half inch is for the deep panel socket. And I would only order that if you have to. I'm trying to remember if Warmoth has any bodies that require it. We may have one or two, but in general, I just avoid that. I don't like those deep panel uh, jacks. So that leaves us with the three quarter and the seven eighths. Um, in theory, you want to get the uh, three quarter inch if you have a body with a large edge radius um, and you want to get the seven eighths if you have a body with a small edge radius. For me personally, I always just opt for the seven eighths. Um, the three quarter can get a little tight going back to, you know, having to have enough room for the jack to expand to accept the cable. Three quarter, three quarter inch can get a little tight for that. So I just always opt for seven eighths. Now, the only thing that you have to keep in mind about that is if you're ordering from the showcase, uh, because we can't do a seven eighths route on a body with a large edge radius if it's already been painted. We used to offer that. Um, but we found that trying to enlarge that, um, that hole there, the, the paint would just chip too often and it's too hard to fix. So we stopped offering that. So if you're looking at a body that is already painted in the showcase, uh, you're probably not going to be able to go up to the seven eighths. If you get an unpainted body, of course, it's fine. We can do that. Or if you're ordering custom, we can do whatever you want, of course. So hopefully, I mean, that was a lot of information there. I hope that that was useful to you. As always, if you have questions, if you have other comments or insights, put them in the comments. And until next time, wash your hands, be kind, and keep on picking.